my daughter left me some Girl Scout cookies. It's that time of year. Oh, wait. That's not what I'm doing here. I am playing with lures. Of course I'm playing with lures. The weather is sunning up. It's gone from 8 degrees from the polar vortex to a toasty 50-something degrees today. And I'm hoping I drove by the lake yesterday and it was froze over, snow on the water. The lake's not very deep, four to six foot deep. I'm hoping, hoping and praying that today the lake is thawed enough I can throw this lure. And what am I throwing today? Well, obviously it's gonna be some type of crappie jig. And it is the YZD Silverside Minnow. I got these on Amazon. You get 12 of them for 14, 14 bucks, 15 bucks. You're thinking to yourself, I can already hear it. The wheels are turning, you're going, wait a minute. I can get crappie jigs for really cheap compared to that. That you can, but you cannot get them like this. And I got to be honest with you, when it comes to this style of minnow type uh, jig versus the, you know, the marabou jig or the feather jigs, they don't work as good as these. These work much better. I normally throw the Spro Fat Fly in a baby bass color. In December, I got two nice bass before the, the deep freeze set in. And that's what I got them on. A bobber and Spro Fat Flies. They are awesome when the fish are just locked jawed and not wanting to eat. So, you fish these. Not only, I know they're a little expensive, but they look good. The heads look good. Uh, the Mylar bodies look good. They come with, they, they decorate them up. I mean, they look almost like every bait fish you could probably have in your lake. I mean, every color is represented here in the 14. So, I mean, you got baby bluegill, you got baby bass color, you got baby perch colors. Uh, they are a, a great looking little fly. Um, they're going to be a little more durable than the marabou, a little more durable than the feather. Uh, only thing I would do is at these little points here, like there and here, I would drop some glue, some fingernail polish, keeping them from unwrapping. Um, if you do that, they'll last a long time. Um, I'm hoping that the bass will come up and eat them. The bass will eat these, believe it or not. I know you think that these are crappie jigs, you're going to get none but, but perch, but the bass seeing those, if you throw that in front of a bass's face, he will eat that. It's an easy meal. It's quick. And he just figures, hey, it's in front of me. I'm going to eat it. There's no effort in it. He just sucks it in and it's gone. Um, fishing these above the uh, above the, the bottom, you want to fish them up a little bit. I would fish them from, if it's a, I'm going to use four feet as the depth. I would fish them, if it's four foot deep, I would fish them at three, no more than three and a half. Um, you don't want these sitting in the mud. The lake that I'm at is a muddy bottom. These would just be sitting in the mud. Uh, I don't think the bass are going to go dig for these out of the mud. You don't want them just hanging them up anyway. Um, it's better, I think, if they're up above the fish, kind of sitting there suspended. Throw it out, let it sit, let the you know let it dis let the rings dissipate, you know, until you just can't stand it no more, and give it a twitch. Um, if there's a little bit of wind in New Jersey here, it's always windy. If there's a little bit of wind, you can throw it out there, let it sit, and let the wind deal with it, you know, and watch that bobber. Like I said, you're going to use a stick bobber with it. That's what I would use. You know, a bobber that has like a, a long end on it. That way, one that's matched up with it. That way, if uh, when you cast it out, what will happen to the weight of the jig will, will get the bobber to stand straight up and down. When that, what happens is, is lots of times after you twitch it, when the fish grabs it, he'll come up and grab it. He'll be on the bottom and he will swim up to grab your jig. And he won't come down with it. He'll just grab it and kind of go up and kind of suspend it. And when he does that, when he grabs it and goes up, the bobber will lay flat on, on, the, uh, on the water. You, it'll never stand back up. So as soon as you give it a twitch and it lays down and sits there, you know you've got something on. So reel down on it. You don't have to you know, set the hook hard. I would fish these on six, eight pound test on a really light rod, something with a lot of give. Um, you can use fluorocarbon. I use fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon, just remember the shock uh, is not as good as mono. Uh, the one great thing about mono is it does give cold water. It's a little stiffer. So, I mean, that's the, the downside of it. That's why I say use a limber rod and uh, reel down on it more than set the hook. You reel down and kind of give it just a slight pull, and that'll uh, that'll set the hook for you. And uh, it's it's a good setup. I catch a lot of bass. We're not when the bass are finicky and they don't want to eat. Um, 
and the fishing's tough, I will go to a, a setup like this and I will catch me some fish. And I may not get big ones. You know, you're not going to get six, eight pound ones all the time on it. But if I get a pound bass or two pound bass, half a pound bass, I don't care, eight, 10, 12 inches. If the fish aren't really biting and I can get four or five fish under my belt with something like this, I will then switch over to a, a lure that I know I'll catch a little bit bigger fish. And, uh, and that way I'm not feeling like I'm going to get skunked. Um, I get the skunk out of the way first and uh, get some easy fish in. You know, you try and catch the easy ones first and that way you'll you, know, you get kind of bored with the, the easy ones to catch. You, you move on to the harder ones. But these jigs are nice. Um, like I said, 12 for 14 something. They are a little more expensive, but they are built a little better. They're designed a little better. Like I said, they're more like the Spro Fat Fly, which is what I, I was using here prior to getting these. I haven't used these yet, but I guarantee you they're nice. I've opened up, looked at them. They swim nice. Um, and for the money, you know, you're going to get some use out of these. Like I said, glue down the uh, the two spots here, here and here. And, uh, you know, some clear fingernail polish, some super glue. I, I like the fingernail polish more than super glue. You can get some gel. It's better. And go from there. But, uh, yeah, it's I'm going to give it a shot today. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll, if I get some, you know, bass, I'll definitely post up some pictures here. And I'll put a link in for this when I, uh, when I post this up. And hopefully you can pick up some of your own. If anybody ties these and you sell them, let me know. You definitely would have a good customer in me, especially in a little bit bigger size as well. Uh, anything in this up to, uh, you know, up to uh, eighth ounce, I'm always looking for in jigs. So um, I'll see you out on the water. If not, uh, have a good one. Hopefully you can fish in your area. It's warming up. I think spring is here, people. I think we're, uh, we're going to start seeing the springtime weather, and a lot of y'all are going to be putting... Uh, videos up for me to watch and and uh, hopefully i'll be fishing and i don't have to watch too many of them have a good one remember fish 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 yeah i'm not in this video i'm bored today so i'm just i'm stir crazy i've been sitting in the house so much i'm just really just stir crazy so anyway today i'm gonna i'm gonna go get a nap i work nights so i'm gonna go get a nap here i'm gonna sleep for a few hours um, i'm gonna rig up a rod before i do that get it ready and then i'm gonna go try and catch some fish so until then, you guys have a good one and go fish.